The last vestige of day had departed, and the sky was a clear midnight blue. The stars winked at Moth as she plodded with uneven steps down the snowy bank between looming, half-seen trees. The crescent moon gave her light to choose a path as she picked her way slowly through the woods towards the house. She took another awkward step, tugging her booted foot free of the creeping cold, only to sink it back in as she descended the forty-degree slope from the road above. She paused again, concerned about straining her reconstructed leg, even though it felt totally normal. She shivered. The self-warming gloves Quirk bought her in town were fine, but they didn't do her toes any good, or her nose. Earth's 9.81 meters per second squared gravity circumvented her better judgment and dragged her, arms windmilling, down slope to the foot of the bank. She let herself stumble the last few meters and clutched the thick trunk of the last tree, a paper birch, she thought, from the way its bark crinkled under her gloves. Lines of black, spectral fruit trees, outlined by the light from the house, stretched across the level ground towards a timber slat fence. Thirty-three meters away that fence, according to Kodak Planet View, which whispered to her earbud in the voice of her handset, zipped up in a slightly illegal scan-proof bag in her pocket. All because the target hated anyone else's technology so very much that he'd installed scanners all around his property. Asshole, thought Moth. Stealing other people's shit is not cool, but we're gonna take you down. She puffed out her cheeks and refocused. All she could see of her path ahead through the orchard was the black barrier of the fence, but beyond it she knew was the pool and then the back door. Lighted, top-floor windows glowed gold in the darkness, beckoning her out of her wintry hell. Even from here, she could see a gray-haired man with a glass in his hand, talking to someone, presumably Quirk, over his shoulder. It started to snow again. This was no place for a good Milanese girl, a convent girl at that, who always said her prayers and brushed her teeth. Moth shivered again. All because Quirk's finely chiseled face fit the fucking story, he gets the easy end of the deal, again. Oh no, Moth dear, I need to arrive in the car to look the part of the art dealer, and Aidy needs to be my android chauffeur. I'm the only one who can play the part, Moth dear, and you're so young and athletic. You'll be able to vault over the concrete road barrier, scamper down the snow-covered forested bank, Skip through the frozen orchard, hop over the fence, tiptoe around the winterized pool, creep up the back stairs to the deck and record the conversation. I'll be scanned at the door, and Aidy will have to stay in the car. Drive away, in fact, because alleged art thief Griner is very suspicious and trusts no technology but his own. <laughs>